this is Victor. I'm here with a new uh, video tutorial and this time we are going to paint a head wraith like the one that you see here on the camera. We are going to do on this one and we are going to use the same methods and do the same paint job. And for that we are going to start applying nihilite oxide on the horse and the bottom part of the rider and yeah, you can use a big brush. So and I do it, I do like that because then I can access very easily the bottom of the horse and I make sure that I have this layer right everywhere. So I'm going to do that. You can see what we are, I'm going to do even in the black part. I'm going to do the apply the nickelite nickel oxide on all the bottom part. I don't do the rider because I need to hold the miniature from a point as it is not on the base. I will hold it from the rider at this moment. Okay. So we do that. And I'm back for the next step. Okay, once the nihilite oxide has divided, now I'm going to use black templar and we are going to apply this on the barding of the horse. So I will talk it from here. We are going to apply this. And again, I do it before gluing because I want to have access to the this is the reason to this part of the barding, okay? So we are going and yeah, when you apply this contrast, this this the the black template is quite opaque, so you will have quite a solid black after this applying that. I don't mind to have a solid black here because it's quite a flat surface so normally the contrasts are not the best for these surfaces but black template is working well okay you will have some maybe some brush strokes you just need to do a second layer but it's like applying a, almost like a base paint here so we're going to do that on the just on the barding and then we are going to do the the rider later on Okay, so I'm doing that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, the, now the, the, I glued the miniature to the base and we are going to do the rider. We are going to uh, put nihilite oxide on the rider. So we have all, uh, all the ghost colors applied on the base. I will start from the weapon and go down and do apply this on all the rest, okay? As we have done on the horse. So I'm doing that. I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step we are going to play again Black Templar on the clothes of the rider. Okay, starting from the hood, we are going to apply this. We are going to leave, we need to go carefully, this type of flames, smoke that is uh, popping out of the clothes we are going to leave it in the in the nihilite oxide color and this as we do for the hands and other parts okay so for example here the hood i will check the more precise brush no It's quite, it's quite, it's a little bit up to you what you want to leave black and what you want to leave in, in the ghost color. 
normally I will try to all these parts that are more like flying away I will leave them in in this lovely color the hood I will leave it black the school I will leave it in a ghostly color I don't do I don't do schools uh, bone colors on, on, on the schools on the bones I leave them in the same ghost Okay, so I, I don't. I only play with these two colors. Then we are going to make the weapon solid, putting brown and metallics. Okay, it's quite a, well, in a way, a simple scheme. But it, this is the, the the thing I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for a very simple color scheme that to give this ghostly effect. Like if you can see, we'll do a little bit more so you can see what they look for them. But here, that we have a hole in the cloth, I will also leave the holes for them. For here, I will look like that, I will leave here a hole like that, another hole like that. Sorry for the dog making noises. We keep doing like that. We will the hole. Okay. So I will keep working on this black and I'm back for the next step. Okay. So next step I'm going to use wildwood contrast. And we are going to do the handle of the Reaper. So we are going to apply like that. Just okay. okay. using a cheap brush to do that I try to use cheap brushes for when I'm using contrast because they can flow very easily to the top of the bristles, bristles and damage your brush right so if you damage cheap brush you don't care too much you don't want to damage your good brushes so I recommend to use cheap brushes for washes and contrast or speed paints I am using contrast because I'm used to them I talk to everyone <coughs> maybe one day I should also check the speed paints to see how they work but to be fair, to be fair I'm very happy with the contrast paints I think they do a great work and so far even I'm using them a lot I did not finish a single pot of them yet I have some that are more than half used but still they work quite well they don't dry and I like how they perform okay here we have we have this handle of the ripper and now I'm going to use we can use lead belcher but I'm going to use because I have it here and I'm very happy that I'm going to use the old ball gun iron breaker it's I said lead belcher but I think iron breaker is the the one that you should use if you don't have lead belcher if you don't have ball gun okay and we are going to do the Reaper blade, the chain, so the parts that you want to look a little bit more solid, more metal, and we're just going to do them, okay? 
Right here again, thin layer. Especially in the chain, you want to not clock any of the texture. But later on, we're going to use some washes to um, show all of the texture of the chain, so you will quite thin. I just I'm, I'm not taking the paint directly from the pot. I have add some water to the paint to make it thinner. To yeah to avoid that is clogging any detail. So I'm going to do this on the chain and as well on this type of bucket that they have at the end of the chain. This is like a burner or something like that. Yeah, I don't know how you will handle that. I guess they are ghosts so they don't care if they hit themselves. But this is what you want to do. Okay, I'm doing that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to um, do the highlights on the black. So for that I'm going to use Incubi Darkness. Okay, we are going to start with Incubi Darkness, then we are going to use the Fang Rust Grey and Fenrisian Grey. Okay, we have all these colors in our wet palette. So what we do? So I start first applying Incubi Darkness on the parts where I want to highlight. Okay. We do something like that. Now I'm going to do, go to, I with this device a little bit, so I'm going to go where I have these wrinkles or folds and I will go on top of them. Okay, and we are going to apply Incubi Darkness. So we cover quite a lot with Incubi Darkness, it's a very dark greenish, greenish color. I like a lot this color to be fair. And I think, I'm thinking even to paint black just using that. As a, as a base color and then applying a wash of non oil. I also have black on my palette in case I need to do some corrections. Okay, because it's easy to make mistakes. So we do it like that. And I put, I put this like that. I will do the other side as well. Okay, because I want to give a little bit of time to Incubi Darkness to dry. I like to work with a texture that is quite thin. And it's mainly thin with... I'll try not to put the fingers I did on top of the part we have painted. Let me just hold it like that. And I think directly with water on my wet palette, you don't need to go for more. For th I'm not using any thinner or medium in that case. Okay, just water and. I keep the paint moisture in my wet palette. Okay, like that, okay? And now I'm going to take the funk. I will start here. We are going to do something like that. So when we have this type of transition, we are going to do a highlight that if it's... it's a, this will seem like a, like a reflection. We have a change of direction, so normally these parts can have like a bright color, they can capture some lights for somewhere, so... And yeah, this is the tricky part on the, on the 3D type of horse. I mean horse, no, um, when you're painting a 3D object, right? 
that yeah you want to make it the highlight you want to make it from the scene from different parts and it's it's tricky so in that case I'm just using this part here okay I'm going to put it I'm going to put the fang on the border here I will go like that following the texture of this fold I will go down we'll adjust this part of the barding and you can imagine that the rest of the black is going to be done in a similar way right so we are playing with these colors to do all the highlights you can see this also I am playing quite a lot and if I see that it went too far I go with a little bit of um, ink with darkness and I help to do the transition I'm mixing on the fly Okay, there we go, and here. And, and we'll go on the holes you want to do, mainly the bottom part. Okay, I do like that. Okay. <clears throat> now we are going to use Raspberry and we are going to do a second level of highlight and I went to a little bit to up on the camera. I will go with the edge. We're going to do the top part of this folds. Let me just do one thing. I go carefully, no you don't want to rush, you just want to do this. It's almost like doing edge highlight. I'm going to do them quite nice and clean. Right here as well. You can see we start showing all the folds of this here there's one over there and now I'm going to use the last of them different recent way and we 
measure the, this final torch. The fender sanger, you only want to apply it in the most exposed parts. Because this will give this type of ultra line reflection. That is helping to, to so the, the advantage of making the or the thing of making these super light points is that they are making the rest more muted. Okay, here I just want to do this type of line there because I think it will make sense. Have like a normally when you have a change of direction that like this one here you will have like some reflections the light will and you will have this type of reflecting lines right it's quite normal if you and it will give this to this thing a little bit of silk here looking like and you can see how it looks like okay the barding at the back so you can compare this side this is the part which is applied again. So now I'm going to do the same for the rest of the black and I'm back for the next step. Okay, here we have how the black is looking like. You can see that we have much more highlights and we have much better definition of all the black clothes. And now we are going to work on the uh, aesthetic uh, part. Okay, we are going to work on the uh, ghost part. And we are going to use this one, Celeste Grey, and white. And with these two, I also have Glaus Raster Green in case I need it, and um, of course, Nihilat Oxide. So, what we are going to do, let me work on the horse head. Uh, we are going to start with Celeste Grey. I need to put some water, to be fair. Let me just. Some water from here. to be a little bit thinner. I will change the white as well. The white is wood. Okay. So let me go work on the horse. We are going to go and this is going to be a little bit of edge highlighting. For example here on this neck bones I will edge highlight and I will give as I said I want to keep my ghost quite simple in color scheme okay it's it's a it's a choice that I wanted to do to keep mm, mainly black and this ghost color, this bluish turquoise color, this and um, with these colors, and you can see what we do is doing that like that. No, we like to do the. And if you have seen my spirit ghost video, the one where I'm painting ghost, is the same technique that I'm using here. Okay, so this is not. I try to use the same technique for all my ghosts. I did a little bit different from when I started painting this army. I evolved a little bit the color, but overall, I think it's giving a very similar result okay then we are going to do this now we are going to take white To 
with it. So with water. White can be tricky sometimes looks thinner than what it's going in reality. that going to do the well the bones okay I have water on my brush So you like that. And then here I will go like that. Here is more. It's a lot of, about brush control. You can see how nice it looks like now. We are going to do the teeth. Then on this type of fiery things or smoky things, I paint them more like not as a fire. I paint them more as smoke, meaning that I keep the white on the most external parts and the blue greenish color at the base of these fires. Okay, and like that, using this technique. I'm going to paint the the horse right, so there is not much to say here. We we'll just keep working on that. We keep painting the whole part. Okay, so I will be doing that on the horse and I'm back for the next step. Okay, this is how it looks like now. We have done all the highlights, so we have this nice and ghostly effect. Now I'm going to use Riza Rust and I'm going to apply some on the metallic parts. We just take some water 
I try to thin down, although this has normally texture of a dry. I like to thin it down and I put it especially because uh, here is something that I did not understand. Normally the rust goes more on recesses and and on the part where you don't have friction. So I did not get why Gate Workshop did a, a dry paint instead of creating a wash like they have done with nickelite oxide or a contrast, right? I need to check to use the, the orange contour. So you can see I applied here and there. I will also put some on the chain. different places that should be enough let's wait that this dries while this is drying I'm going to take a green okay I'm going to use this one military green and we are going to apply this on this type of glass bushes that we have not fan of these things so sometimes I try to cover them with real turf but okay we just apply this green and this I, I will not pay, play too much I will not uh, pay too much attention to these things. I just apply this and I leave it. Okay, we have another one, another small one here. So being ghosts they should have created some smoke or something like that. I think it would have made more sense. Like they have done in the Mortis engine. Another option is to paint this as well, ghostly. A little bit like that. Now I'm going to take Bin Blade Brown, so I need to have to get on my white palette some Bin Blade Brown. This color. We are going to add some a little bit.
that. And then what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take Agrax Air Shade. And I'm going to wash the metallics. And the wood bar. Here, metallics, And now I go on the wooden, and this part was this color that was looking too clear against the wooden now will be integrated, and everything will make yeah, everything will integrate better. Okay, we will start some shading on the wood thanks to the lighter color we have applied with some highlights and shading and with that we have our x-rays finalized let's say I want to go I like to go for a simple color scheme but I think on the table will look good and will match with the rest of the arm okay so here you have this is the x-rays ready for battle so we just need to wait now that the actor shit device but that, that's all for today so i hope you have enjoyed this one please give a like if you have liked this video as usual thanks a lot for watching and see you in later bye